with that, I would like to hand it over to Adam Willets, who's a PhD student and a computation neuroscience training grant fellow in the laboratory of Dr. Christopher Rosso at the, the Georgia Institute of Technology. Take it away, Adam. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'd like to talk today about um, open and closed loop control um, and what role they might play in causal inference for neural circuits. Um, so I haven't done this style of interactive talk before. So I wanted to make it clear to you guys um, what sort of my goals are for this short talk. I wanna summarize a little bit about the intersection of uh, systems neuroscience, control theory and causal inference. I wanna show you some very, very uh, preliminary work um, that's ongoing. And uh, most of all, I really wanna spark some discussion about um, future work in this field and um, you know, gather, gather everyone's inputs on that. Uh, so to start with, I'd like to pose the question of what if you are handed this data on the slide? Um, what would you be able to say about the underlying circuit here? Well, this setup represents what we wanna know as basic scientists. What's the circuit that underlies the activity that we see? Um, and in particular, we wanna know causes and effects. And I would argue that this is also the process um, that we go through for data-driven di discovery of therapies to treat disease. Um, and in particular, we're really interested in um, not just associations between outputs, but really um, you know, causal connections. And some additional things to consider here are, are uh, you know, if we're looking at correlations between activity and even temporal precedence, how do we decide, you know, which of these populations is causing the other? Um, how do we evaluate competing explanations? Um, so there might be multiple hypotheses that lead to patterns of correlation. Um, how do we deal with cases where neurons are reciprocally connected? So that would cause um, activity, you know, to be correlated, but also to have kind of bi-directional temporal precedence. Um, and then I'd like to get to, you know, what experiments could we do on a system like this that would improve our ability to understand it? And in particular, how would closed loop control help? Um, so I argue there's kind of two key tools to tackling this problem. We talked a little bit about causal inference, um, whose goal is to measure causes and effects. And in general, that describes these systems using the language of directed graphs. Um, and the other tool that I wanna to bring to play here is closed loop control, which is becoming more relevant in neuroscience thanks to the advent of optogenetics. And in contrast to open loop stimulation, closed loop control involves updating the stimulus that we deliver based on the outputs that we can measure and maybe some targets. So think of like cruise control, but for the brain. Um, and what I would argue is there's a big gap here in joining these two fields and combining them to understand circuits in neuroscience. Um, so one kind of small um, inroad that we've had to understanding problems like this is to take a dynamical systems view to represent activity in the network. Um, and this allows us to inspect what, what's called the adjacency matrix, which describes how reg regions um, interact with each other, how one set of activity influences another. And a key insight that we've, we've had and maybe others have had um, is that much of the correlational structure in the data can be explained based on this adjacency matrix. And in fact, some of our questions about competing hypotheses for circuits might be well described um, in terms of these adjacency matrix matrices. And furthermore, we might be able to anticipate the effect of possible interventions such as open and closed loop control and say what that might add in terms of our ability to understand the underlying circuits. Um, and then, Secondly, we took this idea um, and decided to evaluate it. And one of the ways in which we evaluated it was to 
simulate very simple networks of integrate and fire neurons in the Brian 2 platform. Um, and then we used a measure of causality um, called multivariate transfer entropy, which you can think of as like a um, information theoretic correlation that takes into account conditioning on other variables. And what we saw um, in our very early simulations is that in fact, um, if you were to just observe data passively from this network, you would need many more samples before you could uncover the ground truth structure than if you applied stimulation actively, in this case, open loop control. And part of our um, current work is to extend this analysis to more realistic network properties and also apply closed loop control and see um, where that has advantages for circuit identification. So in summary, um, I believe that systems neuroscience, control theory, and causal inference are on a collision course, course and that's really exciting. Um, I believe that this adjacency matrix representation of the network dynamics can be a really useful tool for anticipating how interventions might help. Um, and our ongoing work shows that um, basically demonstrates the cases in which stimulation may help um, in this causal inference procedure. Um, so I'd like to end there and thank my uh, many collaborators who've uh, worked with me on some of the in vivo applications of this closed loop control um, and also developed some of the, these ideas with me. Um, and I'd also like to use this slide um, both to you know, prompt discussion questions and also um, if you have any follow up feel free to use this email to um, ask any questions later as well. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I think we have about uh, eight minutes uh, for the discussion. So I would like to ask our participants to type their questions either into the chat or into the Q&A. And uh, first I would like to encourage the panel uh, do you guys have any questions yeah. or comments? Uh, yeah, I was. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, Adam. Sorry, go ahead, Joseph. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, yeah, that was a great talk. Um, I was curious with this approach. Um, would you, in this kind of method, would you combine knowledge of any knowledge of the circuit, or would it only be based off what you notice in like the firing patterns? Yeah, that's a great question. So. Um, really kind of all this stuff that we're looking at at the moment is trying to identify connections between um, neural subpopulations. So let's say, you know, cell types in cortex or something. Um, but one of the things that we're really excited about with this um, multivariate transfer entropy approach is that um, it allows us to kind of generalize beyond, um, say, a specific observational distribution like Gaussian firing rates or something. Um, and as part of that, we hope that it'll allow us to uh, more flexibly identify connections, let's say between neural activity and behavior or between um, external correlates, say of state. So things like pupil diameter um, in the awake behaving animal. Um, so it's not something we've really tackled yet, but we're hoping that we're kind of laying um, some of the groundwork pieces to be able to ask those questions down the line, because I think that's really interesting. Great, thanks. Thank you. Ali? Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for the talk. Um, could you uh, describe again um, how you use open loop? If I understand correctly, you can use the open loop stimulation to get better estimates of the connectivity of the adjacency matrix, correct? Uh, how does that process go? So you make a big uh, I guess you provide a large stimulus and I guess maybe you can explain, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, maybe if I, let's see if I can pull up a, a slide here. So the, the basic, the kind of simplest version of that is um, you can think of with logic like, like this. Um, so, so the basic idea is, um, 
let's say you had data that had correlations at very short time scales, let's say the same, same time scale which you were measuring this, sampling the system. If the true circuit was something like this on the, on the left, we had two nodes and blue was causing red, you might have data that looks something like this, right? So they're correlated, um, but because the time scales are so short, um, you would have a hard time saying which direction that arrow was pointing. So one of the really simple ways in which open loop control can help is if you imagine um, intervening and stimulating, let's say the red population here. Um, in the case that blue causes red, um, you would see the effect of that stimulation in the red data, but you wouldn't see it in the blue output, let's say. Whereas if the opposite was true, if the arrow is going the other way, you would basically see the impact of stimulation in both of those populations. So that's one way in which uh, just open loop control can help um, take you from associations to causation. The other thing that we think is going on here is basically just by applying, sort of blindly applying open loop stimulation we're also raising the firing rates in a lot of cases of these populations. So in some cases, there's, in some sense, there's a non-specific effect of just seeing more spikes from this system makes it easier to identify. So that's another thing that we're really looking to um, kind of disentangle in the future is which of these effects can, can be explained by just sort of uh, boring increases in firing rate and which are more of this flavor um, shown here. Yeah, thank you, Adam. I think I think my comment on on this would be that uh, what you're sort of displaying in the bottom panel of this uh, of this slide really only works if the circuit is uh, unidirectional. If you have a recurrence mm -hmm. in that circuit, then unfortunately, this is not actually going to give you much of that information. Yeah, abs absolutely. So just to sort of address that briefly, you know, one of the ubiquitous um, patterns that we see in neural circuits is feedback connectivity. So if you draw a connection back from, from let's say, the red to the blue here, now um, if you stimulate red, you see activity in both populations. Um, and you couldn't necessarily distinguish it from just a connection from red to blue. So that's um, basically, I think about uh, a ladder of challenges that make the problem more difficult, and then a ladder of interventions that you would apply to tackle those problems. And that's one of the areas where we think closed loop control um, is gonna be really, really helpful. So the idea there is by clamping one of these populations to some fixed point, we can essentially virtually lesion the feedback connections um, and then probe the circuit from there. Um, and hopefully that will address that problem. That's sort of the idea. I think this is a fantastic segue into the, the next question that you may see at the bottom of chat uh, from Roman. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I didn't fully get the closed loop control. The feedback is computed on which variables? What can be uh, what can we base our feedback on? Some behavior observ observables in the animals? Yeah, this is a great question. So um, I'd like to point to this, this publication, um, which is largely the work of Michael Bolas, um, but I sort of helped collaborate on, um, where we address um, tackling closed loop control in vivo. So there the application was um, closed loop control of firing rates, of single units in the thalamus. In this case, it was mostly in the anesthetized animal, but we've got a follow-up paper in the awake animal. So directly, uh, firing rate was really the variable we were trying to control there. And you can see here a case in which we were able to entrain a time-varying pattern. So we're able to induce sinusoidal firing in this cell. Um, but there's also been great work um, in what I would call responsive stimulation, which is like, say, triggering a fixed stimulation based on some behavioral variable. And I, I see that as sort of lying somewhere in between open loop stimulation 
and this sample by sample closed loop feedback control um, that we present in this paper. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. And uh, if you if you could ask you to.